All right, next project. And uh, what I did was I went out and I milled uh, a couple of pieces of uh, cherry that I have, and it's just some it's just some scrap cherry, uh, scrap wood that I have laying around. But <laughs> and I know a lot of you may not. But uh, anyway, the uh, plan here is to well, like I said, I've got these cut out and I'm going to uh, glue them up so I've got a larger thicker blank and um, the uh, size here is about let's see yeah about four and a half wide and six inches long although after after I do everything with them that I need to do with them they're going to end up being a little bit smaller than that so anyway uh, right now the plan is to glue these up and uh, clamp them up and uh, let the glue do its thing for a while and I will come back and show you the next step. Okay, um, right, here's the glued up, uh, here's the glued up cherry. I got two layers here. So uh, the width on this is about an inch and a half, maybe a hair over. Yeah, well, a bit more than a hair. But anyway, uh, the size again here is about four and a half inches by about, uh, not quite six inches, which is again okay for what I'm going to do. And I'll, again, I'll show you the madness that goes along with the method. But anyway, e, the uh, plan right now is to take this outside and uh, run it. Well, first I got to scrape this glue off, so I've got a nice flat edge to work with. But I'm going to run it through my uh, through my table saw, and I'm just just going to trim off, barely trim off the uh, uneven ends on the ta table saw. That will give me a nice uh, a nice <laughs> flat uh, <laughs> set of working uh, set of areas to work from. So anyway, with that, uh, I'll show you the next step when I'm ready to work on it. So I'll talk to you in a bit. Bye. Okay, here's the next step. Uh, what I did was I took that uh, I took that blank and uh, you know as you can see it's all glued up and working and everything. Uh, went on the table saw, made sure I had two parallel ed two yeah two parallel edges on the long side, and then. I cut it again uh, across the grain and got it squared up as well as perfectly as I can get it squared up. Uh, it, it's if it's not square, it's pretty damn close. So anyway, I uh, brought it back inside and it's a little hard to see, but uh, you can tell what I done was I marked off two sets of pencil lines, and uh, this first first line here is uh, let's do it this way. The first line here is three eighths of an inch in from the edge. Uh, the second line is three eighths inch in from the first line, or three quarters of an inch from the edge. Then I took uh, to, just took a simple nail, and I tapped in a starter hole because what I'm going to do next is take a, a drill bit and drill all the way through right here. Because the next thing I'm going to do is going to be on my scroll saw, and I'm going to cut along this first line here. And that's going to give me, you know, an outside area, to, you know, outside edge to take off. Then I'm going to cut on this second line here, and that's going to give me this inside area that's just going to get removed. And that's going to give me, well, two sets of walls. Now, this is something you can certainly do by hand with a uh, coping saw, which is one of these. Or you could drill uh, a series, slight series of holes right here. And actually do this with a jigsaw, but like I said, I'm going to go ahead and use my scroll saw because uh, I think a jigsaw would just leave too much of a curve, uh, and I end up well things would end up getting a little messier than I would want them to. So, uh, but uh, if you were going to do this by hand, um, then I would highly recommend you do this with pine. Uh, it's a very soft wood, but you can get some good results. Or you can do it with poplar as well. Even though it's classified as a hardwood, it's softer than some pine, and it actually takes paint really well if you're going to end up painting this at the end of the project. And, well, when you see the end of the project, you'll know where everything's going here. And, again, you may or may not decide to paint it. So, uh, with that, I will talk to you in a bit. Bye. Okay, here's what I did. Um... I took that whole blank outside and I got with my scroll saw and uh, well anyway you can see what I did here I cut first thing I did was I cut out the uh, uh, again this line and then uh, I cut this part out of the middle so what I ended up having here is a pair of nested uh, sleeves basically now um, yeah scroll saws don't leave the best cuts uh, cleanest cuts uh, so what I'm going to end up doing 
is taking this outside again outside and I'm just going to hit this with the uh, power sander uh, that's with some 220 and especially yeah, one spot I got to take care of is this corner right here I'm just going to have to round that off uh, with the sanding uh, with the sanding then uh, for the inside unfortunately gonna have to do it by hand but uh, anyway I'm not gonna hit this too aggressively because I want this to be a reasonably snug fit but um, you know right now it's about perfect if I could leave it like that I would but uh, again I got to clean it up so it actually looks looks nice as well so anyway uh, that's the next step and I'll show you, show you what it looks like when it's done so talk to you right. here's the next step um, I found a copy of the Dungeons and Dragons ampersand uh, on uh, online so I uh, downloaded myself a copy of that printed it out on some paper <clears throat> and then what I did was took a piece of quarter inch cherry and put a little of the blue tape on the chair. You can see it peeking out here. And then I uh, uh, used a glue stick like that to uh, actually glue the pad, uh, the ampersand onto the quarter inch cherry. Then I centered the quarter inch cherry on the uh, piece of maple that I'm gonna use for the lid. And <clears throat> well, I think you see where I'm going with this. Uh, and that's uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this out to my scroll saw and I'm going to, uh, well, actually, first thing I got to do is I got to take a drill bit, a uh, drill, and I've got to put some uh, pilot holes in the uh, various spots on the drag. And I got to make sure I've got one here, 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 and here. Now, I'm thinking what I'm going to do with the eye is just go ahead and, because uh, what will happen is I'm, when I cut this out, I'm going to cut the eye out as well. And, I'm, and I think I have a different plan for what I'm going to do with the eye. But we'll see how that works out. Um, if it doesn't work out, then, you know what, I just, I'll just skip the eye. I think it'll still look pretty good anyway. But anyway, um, <clears throat> uh, what I have to do is I have to drill some holes uh, through here so I can actually start the scroll saw blades. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a spot like, like right there. Uh, maybe another one, you know, maybe on that corner right there, uh, something like that. Uh, so uh, the spot is less noticeable. However, it I'm going to make sure I drill into the darker cherry wood because it's going to be easier for me to cover that up when it's done. So uh, I guess that's it for now. Hey, come, come here. And uh, I will uh, get back with you when this is done and uh, show you how it came out. So. Talk to you in a bit. Bye. Okay, the uh, uh, contrast is actually pretty good here. Uh, not as good as I was hoping, but uh, still not bad. Uh, anyway, uh, this is my first attempt at a scroll saw inlay, and frankly, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, you know what? Let's let's get it off that plywood and put it on that background there. And yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, what I'm going to have to do is uh, glue this into place, just a few drops of glue uh, of the regular wood glue on there, and then these little gaps like right here and there and a couple of other spots, I'm going to just take some cherry sawdust and mix that with a little bit of the wood glue or alternately a little bit of super glue, or sorry, excuse me, press it into the place and then squeeze super glue in the cracks, one or the other. Both methods actually work pretty good to fill in little imperfections like that. Now the eye, I could leave the eye like that. That doesn't look bad, but what I'm thinking of doing is mixing up a little bit of epoxy, putting some black dye in there, and uh, uh, yeah, there we go. I think that would be a pretty cool looking eye, but it would also be a little bit on the messy side. So we will see. But anyway, uh, anyway, the next thing I got to do is, like I said, I got to get this glued up. So um, I will come back and show it to you after it's uh, done and done. So that's it for now, at least. Bye. All right, this looks like a real mess, and actually it, uh, it kind of is. Uh, but what I'm doing is I'm going back and I'm filling in the little gaps left uh, between the, well, the inlay, not that you can really see it, <laughs> the inlay and the backing piece here. And what I did was I just took some, well, I took some uh, sanding dust, uh, both from the scroll saw and from uh, my sanding, um, uh, the sanding that I actually did uh, the the dust collector on my power sander and you could certainly just collect dust by power by hand sanding as well Just it'll take a little longer 
And then I mixed it with just some white glue. And white glue is good for this because it ends up drying clear. So what I'll end up doing is getting the uh, color of the wood. So uh, what I have to do now is just let this dry thoroughly. And then I can come back and I'll be able to sand every thing down. Uh, yeah, like I said, it is a mess, but it's glue mixed with just cherry sawdust. And again, the cherry sawdust is so it'll match the color of the uh, inlay. Now, you do, will notice there's a little piece of tape there, and that's there for a reason. And uh, I'm not doing the back, and there's a reason for that too, and I'll show you that later, but now i got to answer the phone. Bye. All right, and here it is. Uh, Let's let's get a closer look at it. Uh, if it'll focus, come on, you can do it. Yeah, that's gonna be about as good as it's gonna get. Yeah. So anyway, a uh, uh, couple of spots. I think I could probably go back and just touch up that that one just to the left of the eye that you can see there. But uh, overall, it it looks pretty good. And again, I've got a plan. You can see the eye. Uh, I've got I do have a plan for that, and I'll come back and explain that later. Uh, so anyway, this top, top smoothed out really well. Backside uh, smoothed out as smoothed out also. But again, I didn't fill this because again, I've got a plan <laughs> for what that's worth. <laughs> so, uh, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you on the next step. Bye. Okay, here's the part. Well, almost the part where everything starts coming together. So. Um, Anyway, first thing I did was after the sanding, which I think came out pretty well, but there's a few, still a few rough spots in there that are, is going to take a lot more effort, a lot more time and effort than I have available. So, uh, anyway, uh, first thing I did was I took the, uh, some piece of scrap paper and I just put the, uh, these pieces on here, the box pieces on here, and I traced out the insides of them. So I have a smaller piece and a large piece. And what I'm going to do is later on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that as a template to cut uh, some of the two mil craft foam out. And the two mil craft foam is going to line, well, the, the base of the bottom of the box and the underside of the top. So, or sorry, the inside of the, of the bottom. Eh, you know what I mean. Okay, so anyway. So with that, next thing I have to do is get some glue up going here. And what I, have to, what I need to do is glue the bottom here to the base and then I need to glue the uh, or sorry the inside part of the box to the base and the outside part of the box to the lid and what's going to happen is we're going to get something that looks like that all the way through and that's why I've cut these uh, uh, the lid and the base as oversized as I did because I wanted to make sure I had plenty of error room now uh, when I glue this up, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a bead of glue along the bottom uh, here and on the top here. And I'm not too worried about squeeze out because, again, uh, I'm going to be lining the inside with the, with the two mil craft foam. But uh, I'm going to try to minimize my squeeze out. And if I do get any, any squeeze out, uh, I'm going to let it dry a little bit. Then I'm just going to clean it up with a uh, bamboo skewer. And that will let me get it pretty clean without having to worry about uh, uh, you know having to use water or anything like that and having to, to resand it. I'm gonna have to sand it some more uh, for example I've got some saw marks right here but I want to wait to do one final sanding and I don't want to have to be digging into cracks and crevices to do it. So um, anyway uh, with that I guess that's it for now and I'll show you what things look like after the glue up. So uh, talk to you later. Bye. I love it when a plan comes together. Okay, uh, here we are. We are at the like 90, 95% done stage. And here's what's going on. I, as you can see, I got the box down. I've got it sanded. I've got it cut to final size. Uh, actually, I think it fits a little better if I turn it around the other way. So yeah, it does. Okay, anyway, uh, that's, that's what it looks like. Uh, and uh, anyway, what I did was I went outside and I used my belt sander. And, uh, <laughs> sorry, the dog decided to start drinking right now. But anyway, I uh, went outside and um, uh, used my belt sander to take most of the uh, overhanging wood 
off of the lid and the base. And then I used my random orbit sander to take it the rest of the way down. And then, you know, I used some 150 grit to get, you know, the high points off. And then I finished everything, all the faces with uh, some 220 grit sandpaper. Only thing left now is to finish uh, getting the rest of the sanding dust off. And if you don't have a uh, tack cloth handy, you can do a combination of canned air, vacuum cleaning, and Swiffer cloths to get the dust out. And it will work, it will work pretty well. But uh, yeah, once, uh, once that's done, I'm just gonna hit it with uh, some of this uh, spray polyurethane. Although, uh, what I am going to do is I'm gonna take these paper templates that I used to cut out for the, uh, uh, used to cut out for the uh, uh, craft foam, that I'm, going to, that I'm going to line the top of the bottom with. I can use these paper templates. I'm just going to put them in place, and that way uh, I won't polyurethane over the raw wood, and that will give me uh, a problem, I'm hoping at least, a better bond between the uh, craft foam and the wood. So uh, anyway, oh, I'm sorry, one last detail. I nearly forgot. What I did was I did put the piece of foam that's going to sit in the box top right in here inside so as i was sanding this piece, this part here uh, i could keep checking it for fit and right now the uh you know there's just enough room so when you put that foam in there it uh it uh, seals up pretty snugly so anyway i will come back and i will show you what things look like after uh i've got a few coats of poly on there so talk to you later bye okay here it is ta-da uh final box and obviously, I don't have anybody here to work the camera, so let me give you a bit of get more, a bit more of a close up. And this is what it's looking like after I put a couple of coats of the spray polyurethane on it. It really highlighted the the contrast between the maple and the cherry. So uh, let's uh, give you a bit, <laughs> give you another look at it here. And again, uh, that's the scroll saw uh, inlay that I did there. And of course, the dogs decided to start crunching. And then uh, the little eye for the dragon, uh, again, that's a little bit of one minute epoxy. I just added a, a couple of drops of uh, black model paint uh, into it and mixed that up really well and just put it in the hole. Of course, I lined the back of this with some packing tape before I did it to seal the other side. So but anyway, let's open it up, take a look. And there's the inside. You can see I've got a lot of dice in there. And uh, uh, again, you know, here's the bottom side what it looks like not you know nothing really fancy uh, but uh, let's take a look at the top and on the inside and again uh, what I did was I lined the inside top and bottom with uh, some two mil craft foam you could certainly use uh, you could certainly use leather if you wanted to you could certainly use uh, a cork I think cork board would be a very good choice if you did that you could use thicker craft foam if you wanted to but I had the two mil stuff laying around and I thought I, you know I figured the black would look good and I think that was a good combination. And then, you know, the idea here was to, you know, have a storage spot for your dice, but at the same time, have a place where you could roll a handful of dice and not have them go flying all over the table, which is one of my real pet peeves, especially if you're playing a, uh, some kind of board game with a lot of little fiddly bits. That's why I like dice towers and rolling into boxes and things like that. So, uh, but anyway... Ooh, that was a good roll. Uh, let's see, one, one, six, six, four, five. I will get with you in a minute, okay? Just chill. So, uh, anyway, uh, overall, you know what? I think it. I, overall, I think I did a good job. I, but I would give myself a B minus C plus on this because there's a few spots where it didn't come out as well as I would have liked. Like right up here in this corner, you can see the remnant of the drill uh, of the starter hole I made for the. Uh, for the scroll saw blade and I did have to use some big scroll saw blades to go through an inch and a half of cherry. Uh, it basically was a mini uh, miniature little band saw blade. And then on the uh, uh, on the base piece, uh, you know, I've got that little bit left over and then on the inside I've got that left over and again, uh, not really much I could do about that. Uh, I had to really be, a, you know, I had to work hard and to get it in there the, the the scroll saw just did not like going through hard wood that was this thick uh now on the other hand uh you know i'm thinking that maybe if i'd done this with uh you know uh, a, say a pine or a fir two by six or or cedar or red cedar or redwood 
uh, uh, a two by piece, two by four or two by six, I think that would have come out very nice and it would have been a lot easier to saw out simply because the wood's a lot easier to cut through. Uh, but uh, overall, like I said, even though I'm giving myself at best a B minus on this, I'm pretty happy with the results because I learned a few techniques, uh, or excuse me, I've tried a few techniques uh, that I hadn't tried before and learned a few things uh, about how things work. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed, you know, the dice box uh, video, and uh, I hope maybe it gave you some ideas about some crafting that you could do. And um, anyway. I will uh, figure out what my next project is going to be, and I will talk to you later. Bye.